мы не можем с абсолютной точностью просчитать все последствия того или иного направления деятельности человечества. Но внимательно изучая детали, мы можем по крайней мере спрогнозировать, насколько оно будет способствовать поддержанию стабильности развития. Виктор Сель, руководитель отдела стабилизации перспектив. Центральная. 12 из отдела стабилизации перспектив. 12-й. 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 
for the horizontal world, such a reaction is, to put it mildly, non-typical. In a situation like that, the notion of conflict is not applicable whatsoever, because it never happened as such. And it was just evaluation of every participant's capabilities, when everyone selected a goal accessible for him, and that someone has given up the contemplated goal. Then in principle it's a plus for him, because he assessed his strength and decided that, well, probably has not become a hindrance to others in achieving the goals they have set themselves. На какой-то момент, когда уже стало ясно, что все нас двое, for a certain moment, when it has already become clear that's it, there are two of us. We haven't felt quite well yet, myself in particular. Somehow acclimatization went rough. Even in the base camp, for a night of two or three, I haven't actually slept at all. I once caught myself thinking, that's it, I can't go there, I'm scared. That is, have already started thinking of some excuse for myself, explanation, why I shouldn't go, looking for ways to retreat. There was that kind of moment, literally an evening, when it was panic, but I kind of laid back, managed sort of get rid of these thoughts. To pass a serious route like that, one must want to do so want and believe you can do it. If you know you can, but you don't want, most likely you won't make it either. You'll find a motive or reason, a very serious and objective one, not to go or to return, because of bad weather or something else, some kind of danger. At the same time, if you want to, but are scared and don't believe you can pass, it'll be the same. You must make yourself believe that you can and you want, understand that you want, only then can you pass a route like that. Вертикальный мир — это пространство, в котором человек равен себе. Vertical world is a space where a person equals himself. This must be one of the results, equals himself, not less than himself, but not more either. Those wandering in the vertical world are evidently aware of it. This is why there is no conflict in its everyday understanding. It would occur to no one to conflict with gravity, with matter, with cosmos. One shouldn't require anything above what a person comprehending himself can do in the vertical world a complete equality to oneself, a complete knowledge of one's own value. No one to deceive, no one to force. Funny, we shall proceed. Thus, on June 7, at the foot of Spantic, two teams have started off. Sunshine, four climbers, the total load equaling what Klonov and Davy have to take along, have sharply advanced. Out of the two, Kleonov goes first, the weight of his rucksack is 15 kilograms. Davy is second, he pulls 35 kilos. In one day, Russian climbers have reached the mark of 5,520 meters, spent the night on a level snow platform. June 8 started snowing, no visibility upwards, regular small snow avalanches going downhill. By lunchtime have passed the international team, which wouldn't dare continue the ascent on that day. Only Misha's looking up. Hold for the night in a Bershrund, a crack separating the sloping part of a glacier from a steep rise of the rock. Here we slept. June 9 crawled across the Bershrund and made it to the rock. In one day, passed less than three ropes. We knew it was marble and that it's a kind of rock so difficult, but what we encountered, it certainly was by an order more complicated than we would expect. A rock so decayed and difficult rock, which wouldn't actually hold hooks. The second one, who went behind, was literally pulling out with his fingers only the hooks the first one has left. That is, in case of a fall, a climber would fly like that, 
pulling out the hooks behind him. Well, yes, it was about this way. Well, somewhere at 40 meters there were a few reliable ones. End of the day, June 9. First hanging hold for the night on a rock in a portal ledge. Precisely what the climbers of the second team have categorically refused. On June 10, it's been snowing all day. The International Four, which hasn't made it to the route yet, returned to base camp. Kleonov and Davy have remained alone on the rock. Well, central calling 12. 12. A reply to the request on the theme vertical world. The notion of wanderer, strannik in Russian, in various language and cultural systems is described using various semantic structures. The most conspicuous are the following ones. A person that's come from a part aloof, strange, moving, passing over, showing above the level, exceeding the limits, changing, modifying a way of life. Besides, the notion of strannik is often connected with the notion of lonely. I fit well in this world. But the feeling is always that of a guest who can be merry, cheerful, can keep up the company, have fun, with whom all these people are happy, but everybody knows that he's gone tomorrow. And you've got this feeling too, that yes, you're great, good, you're involved, but you actually live not here, but in a different world. Well, Mishania, how are you feeling? <laughs> Feeling great. The first halt for the night where we got in not with the last rays of the sun. How are perspectives? Make it to the tower tomorrow? Certainly not. Three days to the peak. Three days to the peak. Three days to the peak. Mikhail Davy was mistaken by one day, but on that day, June 13, the four climbers who have earlier returned to the route said over the radio that they were going to reach the goal the next day. They were also mistaken, and also by one day. What a height! We're in an extra altitudinal space, because all my watch is showing is dashes. We're evidently in space. And isn't it hard to breathe? Sort of pulled up myself twice. Anyway, it's about 6,500. Still the pressure is three times lower than that on Earth. To what extent is all this adventurism? An ability to pass along the edge, jump into the narrow corridor that separates the impossible from the absolutely impossible. Some people believe that mountain climbers are people looking for risk, that risk gives them pleasure. In reality, it's not that categorical. Maybe there's someone, separate persons, but most of the people I know, just the opposite do the best they can to minimize that risk. That is, the safest route is selected, the safest movement schedule is selected, technical, tactical methods, which allow to completely minimize the inevitable risk. That's the way I treat risk, don't like taking risks. Well, depending what you call adventurism, Simply, the limits of adventurism are very different for different people. For someone, going to a strange town where you don't know anybody is well considered adventurism. For me, 
It's quite in the nature of things, going to another country where I don't know anyone and travel with some pilgrims in that India probably. I'm trying to keep up a reserve which allows me to do what I do. But you inevitably encounter risk because you're walking on the edge anyway. That is, you believe you've got this reserve, but... Alive? Anyway, you often have to work on the limit when you depend on circumstances which can turn around like the edge of a razor, as Ephremov says. But adventurism is not inherent. That is, I wouldn't encourage indulgence in solo climbing when individuals climb without any safety. Well, I believe it's not necessary. It's completely to no avail. That is, dangers go above the rooftop in the mountains and risking just so, well, I don't like it. This idea does not appeal to me. Нет, авантюризм здесь не уместен. Хотя бы потому, что цель No, adventurism is inappropriate here, at least because the goal is not outside, it's inside these people. And risking one's life means risking the very goal. Here's another result. Goal inseparable of means, of people implementing it. On June 17, climbers stepped out on a sloping snow ridge of Spantic. The way to the peak point is almost horizontal. Removed extra equipment, assembled the portalage, but haven't gone further. No strength to go to the peak. On the 18th, got up at 2 a.m. at 4, set out for the goal, around 5.30, the peak. Just without having tried, it is difficult to understand precisely all the feelings. The mountains themselves are a very attractive place. It attracts a huge number of people just by itself. Just to climb somewhere on the top, stand, watch, expand your horizon, even in the practical sense, not in the metaphoric one. You just can take a broader look at the world. All the more, having climbed a complicated route, you get double satisfaction of yourself standing at this highest point and of having climbed not the easiest way. During this descent, Kleonov and Davy started hurrying. On that day, the climbers and carriers that waited below were leaving the base camp. In the twilight, Kleonov comes untied from a dolphin and falls down a crack. A heavy rucksack turns him around head first. Davy is far and cannot drop a rope to him. By some miracle, Kleonov manages to turn out and not to fall down. Climbers decide to stop for the night. On June 19, the clone of David Duo descended to base camp. It's raining down below. Summer has come to the mountains. To Perspective Stabilization Department, to the one who will continue working. Having completed part three of the report on the theme Vertical World, I leave settings for the next theme. I introduced to the report the notions Ranger, Voyager, Pilgrim, Wanderer, Strannik. The last one, Strannik, seems to be the most appropriate. I draw attention to the most characteristic features of Strannik's capability to perceive a task not strictly connected to the world outside capability to realistically assess a goal and one's own capabilities, capability to exist without support from the outside, and as a consequence, loneliness giving a certain inner mobility. And more, if the future does not appear suddenly, but has roots in every day of the present, then I'm sure I have discovered these roots in the theme vertical world in the period of the end of 20th century post-communist Russia. 12, 12, 12. Central from Perspective Stabilization Department calling 12. 12. 12 on vacation.